Today we're doing a huge meal prep day. We're going to be having tacos for dinner. We're going to be making up 15 pounds of cooked ground beef to go into the freezer so that it's ready for recipes. Most of the time by the end of the day, I'm way too exhausted to cook and then we end up having something that's not that great just to take the time out. So this really helps with that too. Plus, you'll be able to account for how many meals you actually have stored in your freezer for later. While I'm waiting for that, I've chopped up two bunches of cilantro. Just put them into an ice cube tray and a water bath. Stick that in the freezer. And then when they're done freezing, we'll put them into a, sam a sealable bag. You'll notice I have one missing. It has a crack in it. There's no point throwing away a good ice cube tray just because it has one less ice cube. And the other five pounds of ground beef that we have, you want to leave this in a tube. We're going to put this in the freezer just how it is. We're going to wait about an hour to an hour and a half until it's partially frozen. Then we're going to slice this. Then we're going to slice this down into hamburger patties. And then we're going to prepackage those in the freezer so that we all have hamburger patties ready. Mm -hmm. and then when you put this into the containers that you're going to store it into the freezer sure you could use bags but you'll have to wait until it's all the way cooled down before you put it into the bags where was i going with this oh just want to make sure that before you put that lid on and store it in the freezer that it's all the way cooled down you don't want to trap that steam in there or it will get bacteria in it and we're going to drain off or we're going to cook off. We're going to cook off most of the liquid for the taco meat, but we're going to leave a, some liquid in there and that'll help protect the meat in the freezer for much longer. All right. So we're going to be making two batches of salsa. Also, this is also going to go in the freezer. I have a lot of recipes that call for salsa that are some of our favorites. So we're adding a 29 ounce can of tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. You could do this with all fresh tomatoes too. Uh, however you like your tomato sauce. And I'm saving these cans to pour my grease fat into when I drain that off. Oh, almost dumped two of those in there. Then one can of tomatoes. Doesn't matter if it has jalapenos or not jalapenos. Mine does because that's what I bought. And there we go. That'll still work. Now we're going to add two onions and about four jalapenos and puree it. Okay. Now we're going to add back in this water, turn it up to high. You want it to be about halfway covering that meat. Okay. And I am out of taco seasoning, so we're just doing it on the fly which is better in our family because then it turns out a little different each time. Gives you a surprise. How spicy is your taco meat going to be today? For five pounds of meat, we added three cups of water. After you add that water in there, you can get rid of this chop and stir. But I'm going to need that because I'm doing ten more pounds of ground beef when this one's done cooking. Dirty the dish one time and cook for six or seven meals at a time we're going to be adding garlic granulated garlic you can add you could do a garlic powder as well remember this is five pounds so it looks like a lot but it's not so now we're going to be adding cayenne i like spicy tacos so i'm going to go just a bit heavy on that that probably two teaspoons that's not too bad maybe yeah that's about two teaspoons and we're going to need lots and lots of cumin. This is the secret ingredient in tacos. And I just buy whole cumin seeds, put it into my old coffee bean grinder. Mmm, that's so much, so much better. Lots of cumin. And a touch of chili powder. I just went over and bought, restocked up my seasonings in the bulk section. I haven't had a chance to get them put into the containers yet. This is chili powder. There we go. Now we just mix that together and let this cook until it's almost dry, but not all the way dry. 
I have quite a few recipes that my family likes that start with a ground beef and a packet of taco seasoning. So this will work in any of those recipes. We're going to do two of these in two and a half pound increments because that's what it takes for my family to do tacos. And the other, uh, we're going to do five pounds of not seasoned cooked ground beef and five pounds of taco meat that's only packaged in one pound containers. There we go. Yep, and I'm defrosting my big freezer right now so that I have lots of room to start fresh. Everything was getting buried. It was time to do a clean out, figure out what we got left. The apocalypse is here, damn it. I'm getting ready. Yep. You know the apocalypse is here when you can't afford ramen and ketchup crackers. Yep, we're there. I almost bought margarine last week because butter was too expensive. Oh, let's do the salsa. Okay, so for the salsa, we got a 29-ounce can of tomato sauce, a 15-ounce can of diced tomatoes, and then we're going to be adding in a couple dashes of your favorite hot pepper sauce. Mm-hmm. That just really tops it off. Not too much, just like a teaspoon. And then another teaspoon of lime juice. If you can get it open. Ooh, I got fresh limes. I should have done that, but damn it, I'm busy. Okay, lime juice. Then we're going to need a little bit of garlic that we already had out for the tacos. About a teaspoon. That's pretty light. That is pretty dang light. There we go. About a teaspoon. And same thing. About a teaspoon of chili powder. Yep. And it does not, nothing, none of this has to be exact. You can switch it up however you like it. And we're going to do just a dash of cumin, not too much. About a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay, and now we're going to go get our onion and our jalapeno. Mm -hmm. All right, and you see how there's just a little bit of water left in there when you let it settle for a minute. But if you stir it up, it looks like it's almost dry. That's where we're going to stop. So we've turned this off. We're going to get our containers ready. And I'm pretty sure that each half of this is going to fit into my four cup capacity uh, Rubbermaid containers. Okay, and then over here, we've got a uh, half of a bell pepper. Make sure you got all the stickers and everything off of it. it Might have been better to cut that first. Throw that in here. It's gonna put the lid on this. Chop it up till it's the right chunkiness that we like. Mm, or you could even puree it if you like it pureed. Mm. That's so noisy. Oh man, that's so perfect. Okay, next batch ready to go. We're doing two batches at a time because it's way easier this way. And then each half of a bell pepper goes into each Thing and you're not wasting half a bell pepper. Okay. Okay. Well, let's stick on the ground beef. Oh, there we go. Now that most of that juice is absorbed, we are ready to put it into containers. Mmm, mm, that smells so good. This is definitely what we're having for dinner, but we're getting dinner out of the second batch. Okay, now that our ground beef has been in the freezer for one hour and 20 minutes, just hard enough or just hard enough where you can squish it and break the ice we're just gonna slice this into try to do quarter inch patties or half inch patties the ends will be the most frozen so start with that hard one there and by the time you get through to the other ones they'll start to soften up one 
That was pretty big. There we go. That one's a lot easier. Two. Three. And doing it like this when you cook them too, they don't shrink up as much. It's crazy. They try to stay flat instead of poof up when you cook. Get a gallon size Ziploc to put them all in. But I just use these cheaper fold top bags as separators in the freezer. So if you try to put this whole thing back in the freezer, the whole thing sticks together again. But just separate it like that. And once you get a couple of them stacked up, you put it back into here in two rows so that they lay flat and put them in the freezer. Okay. While my last five pounds of ground beef is cooking, I've added a little bit of water to this, about a half a cup also. It really helps the splash factor. It doesn't really change anything else, just the splash factor. Okay, while this is cooking, because when this is about halfway done, we're going to add onions in this. Every time I mix or I cook hamburger, we're adding onions to it. Unless we're making meatloaf and nobody can afford meatloaf right now. It's ridiculous because I have a family of five. But we're going to be adding one onion per pound. We got five pounds, so we're going to add an extra one since these are real small. Six onions to that. And that's really going to stretch and make that meat go further also. Because I know that each uh, container, each of these four cup containers right here, so this is the taco meat that's already done. This is two and a half pounds. So all I have to do is do two cup increments and it with the onion, and it'll be one pound of ground beef every two cups. All right, I've got to slice onions now. Here's what we ended up with. This took about two and a half hours, and I definitely took breaks in between. We have 13 ice cubes of cilantro. This is two bunches, so if you just remember that approximately six and a half of these is one bunch. It's pretty easy to remember of cilantro. We have 18 hamburger patties, and these are pretty thick sliced hamburger patties. We have 14 cups of salsa. That was two batches. Each batch makes almost eight cups. And then we have two, four, six, eight pounds of taco meat ready to go because we ate tacos for dinner already. So there would have been one more of those. And then we have two, four, five, five pounds of regular hamburger that I added salt, pepper, and onion to. That's why we ended up with an extra cup. Otherwise, uh, every five pounds of hamburger meat will be eight cups if you just cook it by itself. Pretty easy to remember. And then when we're ready to eat, if we're only going to be using one pound, you just pull this out in the fridge overnight. And the next morning, you'll use half of it. And then just use the other half within three days of pulling it out of the freezer. This sure doesn't look like a lot of meals. But, boy is it. We have 18 divided by four. There's four meals in here. And there's two, four, six meals in here. And two, four, five meals in here. Oh, dang it, I lost count again. Anyway, <laughs> four plus six is 10 plus the two that we ate so that's two four six seven so we have 17 meals that are already pre-prepped and ready to go that was a lot of meals ready for two and a half hours time plus we have salsa and cilantro which also takes a lot of work out of it all right we'll see you guys next time